All right, I'll take care of it. Jeez, Bill, get off my Bach. Soft clothes. You join me inside the 21 Mercedes Maybach S580. And a quick bit of history on Maybach. The brand has been around since 1909, founded by Wilhelm Maybach, who was an engineer who built cars in the pre-war years before Daimler Mercedes bought Maybach in the 1960s and then created an independent luxury brand in 2003 that didn't do that well. They sold about 3,000 cars before they were quietly shelved in 2013 and then brought back as Mercedes Maybach in 2015. And that's how we've gotten to know them. And this is their latest model based on the all new S Class. So, in this in depth review of its exterior, interior, and driving dynamics, we're going to see whether the Mercedes Maybach S580 is worth the premium over the new S Class. And if indeed it's a rival for true ultra luxury sedans. That's today on Miles Per Hour. And there it is. I mean, how could you miss it? The Mercedes Maybach S580. What a look. Especially in this exclusive duotone paint job, there's cirrus silver up top and then obsidian black down low. And they're both metallic colors, but really only the obsidian black do you see the, the pop of the metallic flake. This paint job takes Mercedes an extra week. Part of that going to this hand painted parting line that runs along the side of the car. And I'm not typically into duotone paint jobs, but I feel like you have to do it with the Maybach. It just, it goes with all of the other glitzier touches like this massive chrome grill that was inspired by the 2016 Vision concept. There's Maybach pressed up top, and then you've got, interestingly, a smaller sensor plate than the regular S-Class, which is taller, and I don't think works as well with the grill design as this one does. TriStar hood ornament, of course, perched on the nose, but then beyond that, you see the bulge of the hood? It sits an extra three quarters of an inch higher than the standard S-Class, and you've got that chrome strip along the center. Projector LED headlights, like the regular S-Class. And again, I, if you watch my standard S-Class review, I prefer the design of the old generation S-Class with the three daytime running lights in the center there. This uh, just doesn't have that same impact, but you've got these kind of dazzling little LEDs down low and the daytime running light up top. A fine mesh in gloss black mingling with the chrome borders. Lots of chrome on this car. Oof, now we're getting to my favorite detail on the whole car, the monoblock wheels. I know they strongly split opinions. Some people hate them. I adore them. I've always loved the monoblocks and I can't picture this car with any other wheel design. They just, they work with that, that mobster feel. And shockingly, they're only, only quote unquote, 20 inch wheels. Whereas like modern luxury standards is 21 and above, you don't need any bigger diameter because there's so much wheel. I just, I love them. I do. Now I gotta take a long walk back to get the whole car in frame because they added seven inches to the wheelbase of the S-Class, all of it dedicated to that rear passenger space. Look at that back door. It is giant. And as we'll see when we get to the interior, that means prodigious levels of rear passenger space. Other Maybach touches include chrome around the windows. It now covers the B pillar. The flush mounted door handles are standard S-Class stuff. They present themselves when unlocked. They illuminate at night and cast a Maybach specific logo puddle lamp. This Mercedes Maybach logo on the C pillar also illuminates at night. Pretty neat. Getting to the back now. The rear view is very much standard S class, apart from the duotone paint job. And I did debate in my S580 review the new taillight designs versus the old. Some people don't like them. I do. I like these rows of LEDs. And they have some pretty neat welcome and parting signature lighting. Maybach printed up top here, chrome strip across the trunk. 
S580 badge on the right hand side. Dropping it down, we've got more chrome garnish around the diffuser portion. Chrome exhaust finishers and a bisecting chrome piece. If you peek in there, you can see the two pipes that show up on either side. The whole car, it, it gives me very classic mobster vibes. I don't know why. And that, I'm not typically into glitz. And this car is glitzy. But the mobster vibe, the monoblock wheels, it kind of sells me. I kind of get into it. But let's check out that interior now. On our way in, we'll see we have smart keyless entry. You put your finger on that tab with the key in your pocket. You can lock or unlock the door. That's for the front doors and the rear ones. What do we say to that? Maximum convenience. Yeah, that's right. And here I noticed it says Mercedes Benz, but should it not say Mercedes Maybach for that full experience? Nitpicky, I know, but the devil's in the details. Opening up and looking inside at this extravagant cabin where we have pretty much all the S-Class's options here as standard features, plus some Maybach specific goodies like this suede fluffy pillow and this exclusive black Napa leather with this quilted pattern. These seats are heated, ventilated, and massaging. That quilted pattern is also here on the door inserts. Here are the heating, ventilation, memory, and right seat controls. So yes, you can play tricks on your right passenger. No, it's for chauffeurs, obviously. The door handles feel solid. You've got piano gloss black here, not my favorite as we know, but it flows up into the piano lacquer flowing lines. That is an option on this car. And yeah, it's more piano gloss black, but I think that the spacing of the lines and the sort of contemporary luxury experience that is very much this car, it, it works with the trim. It's just gonna collect dust and smudge. Just, I'm just saying it, all right? Leather here on the door all the way down. And now we see the beautiful Burmester speaker covers. That is another usually option on the S-Class here as standard. 30 speakers, 1750 watts. The sound quality is crystal clear. And with the two resonators in each seat, the bass actually hits. It's a full sensory experience. I love it. Moving down, we've got illuminated tread plates, some thicker than average carpet. It's not quite lamb's wool thick like in the Rolls Royce Ghost, but it's pretty good. And then here we have Maybach pedal covers with the texture. Love it. The leather is all the way down here below the steering wheel. And let's move on in now. Now, one complaint I have, first of all, the doors don't have really good defined stopping points, but also they're so far away when it's all the way open. They are, of course, soft close. And you can see a bit of the ambient lighting right now, but let me tell you, at night, it's incredible. And even here in the shade, look at this ambient effect. I have never seen ambient lights, except for the S-Class, of course, as intense as these. It's such a wild, like nightclub vibe. It's very cool. Turning attention to the steering wheel now with this leather cover for the airbag and stitched border. TriStar, this just looks the part of luxury. Maybach written out down here, leather and wood border, and of course the steering wheel is heated. You've got all these capacitive touch controls left and right. On the right up here, these are gonna control the infotainment. These down here for your media and voice commands. On the left down here are for your adaptive cruise control settings. And here is for your digital instrument cluster, which is graphically overwhelming. It's absolutely beautiful. You've got all these different skins to choose from, along with customization within the individual skins. And I'll say this, previous versions of capacitive touch on Mercedes-Benz vehicles were just downright frustrating to use because it was like you'd swipe 10 times and maybe the 10th the swipe it would register. But now, pretty much every time, it picks up on what you're doing. So I, I like this system now. Obviously, a physical input is going to be 
100% accuracy, but this is, it's not bad. What is kind of strange are these paddle shifters. They're very chunky. They actuate okay, but the materials are very cheap feeling. I, I know that's not the goal of this car. It's not about performance. You're not using paddles often, but it would be nice if there were higher quality materials for these, especially when they're poking out and looking at you and you know they're cheaper. The knurled finishes on the turn signal stock and wiper adjuster are just fine and uh, they hide plastic very well. But then you come to the right and there's this cheaper feeling plastic on your gear selector. And this is something you'll use pretty often. I had the same complaint though on Rolls Royce with their Ghost and they use cheaper materials there. I'm like, why do automakers do this? Don't cheap out here. You touch this a lot. The power adjustments for the wheel are on the left hand side and there's ample tilt and telescope. So any body style driver, you're gonna find something that's accommodating for you. There's a head up display that's nice and large with lots of useful information like posted speed limit and navigation. Looking over here, we've got these brushed metal finishes on the air vents and it's such a satisfying click, neural finish in there. The only complaint I have about these are that they glare up on the, the windshield and this is in shade, in direct sunlight, it's pronounced leather up on the dashboard looks and feels amazing that ambient lighting of course is awesome the flowing lacquer lines more brush metal air vents over there with knurled finishes knurled finish on the start stop button and i love this there's a physical engine start stop the the auto start stop you can turn it on and off easily oh also wanted to mention this the instrument cluster the 3d effect is standard on the Maybach and it doesn't translate well in video, but it's such a trippy experience as the driver. So much so that if you've had like a long day, I like that the button to turn it on and off is easy access in the upper left-hand corner. It doesn't go away because it could conceivably give you a headache. Looking at the 12.8 inch OLED display that runs the latest version of MBUX, yes, it's 50% faster and speed is a very good thing, but more importantly, if you're not going to give me physical controls, would you only get a couple here? At least make the touch system easy to navigate. Don't make me hunt around in complicated menu structures to find things that I'm going to change up all the time. I want a couple clicks for ambient lighting. I want a couple taps for the massage settings. Things you use daily. I want climate control settings to be easy to find. They're here all the time. And then you can further go in and change the airflow with another couple taps and you get haptic feedback when you tap on the screen so you know your message has been received. Furthermore, you've got a profile with this fingerprint scanner. So you hop in the car, you put your finger there and it brings up all your custom settings. You have this button here for all the things you might toggle on and off daily, safety features, so on and so forth. You have augmented video for the navigation system. So a standard feature in the Maybach is you get this video, this front facing camera with showing you street names and this cool animation of arrows pointing you in the right direction, turn by turn showing up there and here on the infotainment. You've got a really advanced camera system that, I mean, as production cars go, I, I don't think I've seen a system this sophisticated. To be able to just watch traffic around you from a hundred yards away is wild. Plus, of course, you have your normal front and rear and wheel views, plus parking assistance for parallel and perpendicular. I mean, yeah, you got a lot of smudge going on here, but that's with any touch display. This system, as touch-only systems go, is about as good as I've seen it. Moving down, moving over the gloss black, with all its dust. You've got your key fob here with this bright chrome surround Maybach written under the tri-star unlock and trunk release this is the lock button on the back you've got piano gloss black the heft of the key fob is nice so it feels high quality textured pad where you might stick your smartphone if it's not charging in the wireless smartphone charging slot you've got two usb-c ports here there's a an insert for smaller to-go cups and then a larger mug slot there this is knurled finish below that knurled finish here on your leather console it's kind of shallow only about two inches deep but you do have two usb-c ports there in the glove box is your fragrance which i never want to use 
up above is a full leather stitched headliner. Continues on over the pillars and just works wonderfully with these two massive sunroofs. It's not a single piece of glass, but I think I honestly prefer this because you've got this amazing Burmester speaker cover there in the back. And you've got this swipe controller to bring on the visor or you swipe it back. And then once again, to open up the sunroof, you wanna see that whole operation. Ooh, suede. Then you can in my walk around video. Frameless rear view mirror, not digital, but you got all those camera systems. You don't need it. Leather for the sun visors. Some plastic there. And they do slide fully to cover up all that glass. Plus, you have an additional visor that comes down here that's also in leather. Why doesn't every luxury brand do that? Now it's time to go look at the rear seats. The good stuff. The chauffeured stuff. But on our way, Let's take a peek at the trunk, which it isn't massive, especially not with the optional champagne fridge in the center, taking up a lot of cargo space. You have some additional storage under here, but really this is going to fit like two medium to large size suitcases, and as I've shown, maybe a backpack or duffel on either side. It's not tiny, but it's also not huge. Trunk clo closes quickly. Oh, no capless fueling, come on. We're gonna check out the right side seat because this is the chauffeured side. It's a massive door, but you see what I mean about like not having to find, it just, it doesn't really have clear notches for opening the door and I wish it did. Here in the back is where the Maybach really earns its keep. It takes a full step away from the standard S class because the rear occupant space and accommodations are amazing. These seats are heated, ventilated, massaging. You've got the same, they're actually bigger, poofy suede pillows. There's additional neck and shoulder warming. With the Executive Plus package, you get that full length center console. It has two trays that come out of the center. You have additional wood trim and heated and cooled cup holders. We'll step in and just appreciate with me all of this legroom. This is where it crushes the Flying Spur, it crushes the Rolls-Royce Ghost in terms of rear passenger volume. There's so much of it. That's my seating position, it's six feet tall. The seats are maybe a little, this one maybe a little bit further forward, but I'm fully relaxed here and it can get better. I'll show you that in a sec. Right now, check out these two tablets that function much the same way as the infotainment. They're responsive. You can set the ambient lighting. You can set the navigation destination. You can choose from one of your several different massage types, including a calf massage. Yes, this has calf massage. We'll go to that in a sec. But these work very, very well. Looking at the doors, you've got your Bluetooth Mercedes branded over your headphones. And the doors are really far, really far. That's why there's optional power close for the rear doors, which you can even do with gestures. We just don't have that option. So I got to stretch, but they soft close. And then this brings me my seatbelt, which also has an airbag in it, by the way, there's an airbag in that seatbelt. Looking at the door controls, you've got your ventilation, your heating, two position memory, and then these different pre-programmed calibrations for the seat. So we're gonna hit that one. That's gonna send the seat really far forward, fold the headrest, and then prompt this to come up, my calf support. And when it's finished, I'll be sitting at a 43 and a half degree angle, just lounging. But in the meantime, while it's doing that transformation, we can look at the leather backing here for the seat, the ambient lighting coming around it, gloss black for this opening pouch, and the piano lacquer flowing lines around it. Ooh, and the last step, extending a, a uh, heel support. So here I am, again, six feet tall. 
I'm fully stretched out. If I extended myself any further, I even have like an extra inch or two of foot room. If I extended myself further, I wouldn't have the lumbar support. So I'm lounging and it's beautiful with a big panoramic roof, the gorgeous Burmester speaker cover with the ambient lighting around it. You've got LEDs here, no vanity mirror. That would be nice to have the leather grab handle here the more gorgeous Burmester speaker covers, all of that ambient lighting. And now that that tablet's really far away, I can use this one here. Oh good, the battery level's at 100%. And it does much the same things as that does. In you go. To access the center console, hit this button here and it folds into itself. Oh great, I've set it off that transforms and now we've got access to the four zone climate control the cooling and heating of the cup holders which go blue and red and then these shush and then these are clamps for your champagne flutes so when you press that down it clamps over the feet and holds them steady but where are those champagne flutes miles well those we'll find in here so behind the piano lacquer flowing lines, you've got your champagne refrigerator with two different settings. Pull that down and you can see your champagne storage in there. Two larger bottles or three smaller ones. And then up here, if I can do this, oh, that's hard, is where we would store, oh, I've been robbed. No, they just didn't give me the champagne flutes, but that's where they go in these suede felt wrapped housings so very fancy that comes up and then in the console which we lift up here we'll find two of these storage trays or two trays they're not storage trays unless they're i suppose storing your food for a second so you pull them towards you leather topped and spin it over and i mean you're in your private jet now you are There are just so many toys to play with back here, at least if you're a child like myself. The seat belts even, look at these. They pulse red until you put your belt on. It's just dedication to safety. Sun blinds, we've got plenty of sun blinds as well. Even for that little back window. And when they're all deployed, it's very well shaded. You could take a nap at ease. You don't even miss the fact that these rear windows aren't tinted. You just don't care. I don't want to leave. I want to hang out. We got to finish up this interior review. So, and I want to leave that tablet back there to talk to itself. Uh, just to see with the seat fully reclined. the lounge factor and with all that done two last things to do if you know the channel you know what they are one is the big bottle test will it find a spot in the mercedes maybach s580 we'll slide this forward see if it fits in the cup holder where it doesn't it could theoretically go here i suppose but then that covers the wireless smartphone charging slots that's not good in the center console it's so shallow yeah that's not gonna fit there door pocket last hope oh, kind of fits in snug door test it stays so we've got a spot for our big bottle that passes the test and with all that done if you've been enjoying this video please like comment and share it subscribe and now we're gonna rev it out and hit the road. Though it does not have launch control like the Bentley Flying Spur, we are still going to give the Maybach the beans. So we'll go to sport drive mode here and add a bit of brake boost on our launch. Boost it. And here we go. Oh, the V8. Oh, you hear it? 
I didn't expect you actually to hear it, but you do. And though the launch didn't pin me in the back of the seat, it was still quick. So, 4 liter bi turbo V8 motor makes 496 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. It is connected to a 9 speed automatic gearbox, sending power to all four wheels permanently. 0 to 60, says Mercedes Maybach, 4.4 seconds. And that felt about accurate. It wasn't, definitely wasn't a high three second launch like I felt I had in the Flying Spur V8, but it was still quick and you really could hear that V8 and it sounded good. The motor is perfectly sufficient for this car. It weighs a lot at 5,100 pounds, but the power it generates is excellent. It's, it's, it feels well suited to the car. And now, let's see about that turning radius. With the rear wheel steering, four and a half degrees. Oh yeah, tight. <laughs> I'm laughing here because I really didn't expect to get this much throat in a Maybach, but here we have it. And therefore it's, it's a good time when you get on that throttle fully. Yeah, that turning radius is very good. Available 10 degrees of rear wheel steer in the opposite direction of the front uh, means that the turning radius is like a compact car. The four and a half degrees that we have here is still so useful in tighter spots like parking lots. And then we'll see how it does when we get to a handling stretch. But between now and then, let's go to a more appropriate drive mode for the car. You've got comfort, you've got individual, but it's all about that Maybach mode. The front facing camera keeps popping up whenever it comes to a light. So we're in Maybach mode now. What does that do to the car? Well, it prioritizes rear passenger comfort. So the suspension is going to be as supple as possible and it starts the vehicle off in second gear. So you don't have any of that, you know, uh, urgency to the throttle response that you would get in first gear, even though the suspension tuning of this car is such that it's never really, you know, punchy off the line. It's smooth in its progression, but starting in second gear emphasizes that even more. And so Maybach mode can be otherwise considered chauffeur mode. If, you're, if you've got a rear passenger, you put it in Maybach mode and they are as comfortable as possible in this car. And now we talk about ride quality. The air suspension system with the adaptive dampers is largely the same as you get in the S-Class, short of the tweaks that they make for Maybach mode that I, I just discussed. And as I felt it in the S-Class, it is really very good. It's the best I've ever experienced a Mercedes-Benz air suspension, which is typically, in my experience, one where you don't necessarily feel the bumps as you go over them, but you really do hear them, and that disrupts the at-ease nature of the car. This vehicle and the latest S-Class, it takes the edge off of the acoustics of going over the bumps. You still hear them more in this car than I think you do in the Flying Spur or certainly the Rolls-Royce Ghost, but you don't hear them so much so that I'm like, ah, I'm disrupted. The ride quality is very good. How's the handling? Let's go back to sport mode and take this corner post haste. How's the handling? How's the braking? So we'll dive on these brakes here. Oh, those are good. Wow, you could really feel the rear wheel steering there, adding this level of stability through that corner. It wasn't quite as sharp as I think the Flying Spur did that bend, but it was still very confident. And now, Let's go into manual mode here. I am going to pull on the paddles that I don't savor 
quite as much as, for example, that flying spur. But the shifts are pretty quick and, oh yeah. The thrust is robust. Now it does upshift for me. So the red line's around 6200 and it, it upshifts for me before I get there and I don't like that. But goodness do I like the way it picks up speed. Manual mode, not this car's thing. But mid-range pack, there's plenty. And these brakes really are good. 5,100 pounds again, and it just hauls it down with authority. Back to Maybach mode. To talk a little more about the driving experience luxury-wise. So the ride quality, it suppresses the bumps well. You don't hear them nearly as much as I felt you did in previous Mercedes-Benz models. You still hear them more than I think the, the Ghost and the Flying Spur. Cabin insulation, they added additional sound deadening materials for the Maybach S-Class versus the standard S-Class, particularly in the wheel wells. And so uh, there's not very much tire or road noise, but you do get more wind noise, I think even with the, the dual pane glass you have in this car and the uh, the acoustic laminate they have, you get more wind noise, certainly than the Rolls-Royce Ghost, and I think a little more than the Flying Spur. It's admirably, respectably quiet, not the quietest in the segment. We interrupt this message to bring you portal axles and just absurdity on wheels. And we're back to sport mode for one more test of bravery in the corners. My box style. Hard on these brakes. A little wiggle there. Turn is pretty sharp. Gonna let the back end come around. A little rotation. You can feel the roll strong. But it was stable. And powerful out of that hole. Okay. So definitely not the spunk of the flying spur through the corners. The weight is less disguised in this vehicle, but it gives you the assurance that should you need to, you know, be quick about your movements in the Mercedes Maybach S580, you can do it. You can definitely do it. Settling back into, let's just go to comfort all around. And now here on the highway, let's try out some of the driver assistance technologies, including adaptive cruise control, steering assistance, and goodies like lane change assist. And you know what? In its segment, these features are unparalleled. The Rolls-Royce Ghost doesn't have anything like this. The Bentley Flying Spur doesn't have anything like this. This is so easy to use, and it's such an asset for longer highway trips. If you have a commute, then these features are gonna come in so handy. And I mentioned the competitors, but let's dive deeper into a competitive discussion. The Mercedes-Maybach S580, it starts at $186,000, give or take 50 bucks. That is $68,000 more than the Mercedes-Benz S580. Is it worth that? Well, my question for you is, are you or your loved ones going to spend any time in the rear seats? Because if so, it's 100% worth it. The cabin accommodations back there are just unbelievable. So yes, worth the premium over the standard S580. Is it worth it compared to the Bentley Flying Spur? which starts in V8 form at $196,000. So 10 grand more than this vehicle right here. However, this one as tested is $212,000. Just something to keep in mind with the flowing lacquer lines and the champagne fridge and flutes and duotone paint job. The Flying Spur makes 542 horsepower, a healthy bit more than this one. The zero to 60 time, this one 4.4 seconds. The Flying Spur V8, 4.0 seconds. Top speed, 155 miles per hour limited in this one, 198 miles per hour in the Flying Spur. Fuel economy, 19 combined MPG for the Maybach S580 and 70 for the Flying Spur V8. 
Rolls-Royce Ghost. $332,500 to start is oh, just about $150,000 more than the starting figure for this car. It makes 563 horsepower. So again, another chunk more than this. The 0 to 60 is slower though, because that car weighs as much as a house. And the fuel economy is just 14 combined MPG because it's a twin turbo V12. Which would I have? Well, I need to break this analysis down into three parts. Exterior styling, rear passenger accommodations, and then driving experience. Exterior styling, I'm gonna rank them in this order. Number one, Bentley Flying Spur. I think it's the most refined looking vehicle in this segment while still having some visual punch. The creases, it just, it gets ya. The Rolls-Royce Ghost is, well, I'm not gonna say it's subtle, right? It is basically a Greek structure on wheels, but it commands this awe and this respect. If you drive a Ghost, or you coming out, or coming out to the chauffeur in a Ghost, you just, you get this wow factor. The Mercedes Maybach S580. You know, as I said in the exterior walk around, the glitz and the, and the pomp is not really my thing, and so this is a very personal response to the styling. Not really my thing. I could get on board with the you know, kind of mobster wow, and those wheels just go ahead and mount them in my house because I love them so much. But the exterior styling of this one is not my favorite in this segment. Flying Spur, number one, Ghost and this are kind of tied in two. Interior rear passenger accommodations. The Rolls-Royce Ghost has the quietest, most comfortable ride with the squishiest seats. The Bentley Flying Spur is that a little less, just a step down. The Mercedes Maybach S580 comes in with unreal levels of space and creature comforts and technologies and coolness with the ambient lighting, I think it just dominates the rear passenger awesomeness. And then driving experience. This one, once again, I think the Flying Spur has the edge. It is not just quiet and comfortable like the Rolls-Royce Ghost and more so even than this Mercedes Maybach S580, but it also is genuinely fun to drive with those active electronic anti-roll bars and just the punch you get from that V8 motor and the sound, it's, it's fun. This one, I'm not gonna say is fun to drive in that same way. It is smooth, it is very quiet, not to the same level as the Ghost and Flying Spur, but it's very quiet and it just absolutely inhales highway miles and has the benefit of those awesome safety technologies and a really cool navigation system. So I think overall, it, especially if I'm driving it, the Bentley Flying Spur wins me over in the segment. But if I'm being chauffeured, if I'm coming out of my executive suite in my office building and I'm coming out to a car, the Mercedes Maybach makes you feel special. And when you're in those back seats, nothing beats it. It's so cool. It's so sophisticated. If I'm being driven every day, it's got to be this car. It has to be. And that's it for this in-depth review. Very extensive, I know, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and share this video. Subscribe if you feel like it. And I will see you guys again next time.